the guys from uh, Block Smartwatch are going to join me here on the stage. And uh, while they do that, I guess we'll just talk a little bit about their, they had a Kickstarter campaign last year. Uh, no, please, come, come up, because I'm just vamping right now. <laughs> um, uh, they, they had a Kickstarter campaign last year. They raised $1.6 million, a little over that. Um, hi, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, hi, I'm Ali. Uh, hi, I'm Serge. Uh, we are founders. Great. Uh, well, so... I think you know the first question is: So you guys make a modular smartwatch. Uh, what does that mean? So basically, uh, we we felt that there's a need for watches, smartwatches, to be personalized, and so that we can customize them. Basically, each link in the band of the watch or the smartwatch is a, has a unique functionality, and you can choose what you want. For example, you can add two extra batteries, the GPS, the heart rate monitor, and your contactless payment. Or if you're in sports, you can add another types of sensors. It, depending on what you do, you can choose the modules you want. You choose their colors and materials. Great. Um, so. Is the experience then that you assemble it on the site and then when you get it, it's, it's already basically assembled and it's sort of a, a closed product? Or do you actually, you can like sort of tweak it at like any time? It's, it's plug and play. So you can basically just uh, connect the modules together and make your, make your smartwatch. Cool. So you guys were, I know that at least at the time of the Kickstarter campaign, you were saying shipping May 2016. Is that uh, still the status? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're working with one of the largest manufacturers in the world, uh, Compile Electronics, and they are fully on board. Um, you know, and right now, actually, we've entered the EVT, so engineer validation testing of uh, our manufacturing processes. So um, very soon, you'll see some, um, you know, working samples. And are you, are you, so you guys aren't wearing the watch yet. No, this is just a kind of design prototype okay. to show how it looks. Uh, but basically, uh, we are going to have the first working stuff. We have, we have functional prototype we showed in, the, in our Kickstarter campaign, but we are going to show the first uh, factory-made device. So. You guys were watching the, you know, our discussion, uh, you know, before before you came on. You know, there was a little discussion about wearables, about maybe some of the obstacles. I think a lot of the people on on this stage, and and granted, you don't take us seriously because we have no idea what we're talking about. But uh, there's a lot of concern, feeling right now that one of the big barriers to entry with wearables is battery life. Uh, how is your battery life? I mean, do you agree with that? And and how is your battery life? Um, I think that's probably the best part of blocks. You know, uh, when we first uh, thought of modular smartwatch, the first block that really came to mind is an extra battery block. So you, as a user, can add in one or two or three extra battery blocks to your watch and prolong the life of your device. And not only that, you can actually, you know, if the battery is still running out, you can just clip on a module uh, and you know just swap them out. So really, it's a watch which can run for a very long time. So when you're talking about sort of adding all these different things. How does that affect the price? I mean, what's, what's sort of the price range we're talking about here? Um, so on Kickstarter, we were retailing about $300 for a device which includes uh, the core watch face, which basically is a standard smartwatch, has all the features that you'd normally have, like notifications, activity tracking, and so on. And we had these extra modules. Uh, so I think we introduced extra battery module, heart rate mo uh, monitoring module, uh, payments module. Um, and these were all together $300 in a pack. Uh, on retail, they'll be a bit more expensive. So uh, we're thinking uh, somewhere about 250 to 300 for the core module, um, the watch face, and each module will be about 20 to 50 dollars each. Do you see this as something? I think because you guys are, are planning to also work with developers, right? So eventually there'll be modules that aren't made by blocks at all. Uh, so the whole basically aim and idea about Blocks is to make an open platform. The same idea that we have one and a half million apps made by all different developers and companies and this big ecosystem of app developers, we can see the same thinking coming to the hardware. So we can allow different companies to come in and develop these different modules. And we have a lot, a lot of interest so far from big companies and smaller companies. You know, so in this argument about sort of like open versus closed, I think that, um, I mean, I think when people say that, they always sort of flash back to maybe like Microsoft and, and Apple, and, and, and certainly that's, it's, it, we've seen iterations of that all the way, all, all along. Um, but I think when people think of it, particularly about open, is that obviously there's a lot more possibility there, but then there's less control over the experience. Maybe it's, at least in the initial stages, um, you know, the idea, you know, there's, there's a part of me that's like, just give me the watch. Like, I don't want to have to, like, think about, like, all the different things I need. Do you think this is something where you can still de deliver a great consumer experience for a mass audience, or do you think this is more for techies? 
So basically, because we are doing a hardware device, it's a bit easier for us to control, easier and harder to control this ecosystem. Basically, because all these modules need to be uh, developed by our manufacturer, we make sure the quality is uh, on par with all of the different modules that we are developing. And initially, we are starting to work with these big companies who have a reputation in making hardware before. Cool. Uh, so I guess I wanted to go back to the Kickstarter campaign. Um, so $1.6 million, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, how, what was your goal for the campaign? So it was uh, 250K. So you, did, you, did, you did okay. We well. reached our goal in 56 minutes. <laughs> what do you think it was? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's a great validation just that, okay, other people want a modular smartwatch, but did you find that, you know, in, in looking at who, you know, who the, you know, the backers were, what, what was it that, that really made them say, not only do I need to do this, but I need to do this now in the first 56 minutes. Yeah, so I think uh, primarily it's the people who really want co to control the experiences of products that they get. So people who really care uh, of buying not something just off the shelf, but they, they like to build their own hardware. That, you know, they like to really choose the apps that they have. Um, so, so primarily it was like the, the hackers, right? Uh, people, people perhaps who go for an Android phone rather than iOS device because you just have so much flexibility. And that kind of mindset of people who really want to customize their own experiences and have their own apps but with blocks, they'll be having their own modules. Those are the kind of people that really love blocks. And I think that's kind of our primary target, at least for now. But the idea is that maybe you start with like the hackers and, and you sort of expand beyond that eventually? Of course. So, I mean, we can see right now from CES, there's so many other smartwatches being introduced in the market. You know, uh, we, we've just seen the Casio smartwatch that we talked about Fitbit. You know, on all of them are doing very different things. So what if I'm a consumer who likes to, uh, you know, go hiking, but I also love my sports and I want have to have a very advanced sports sensors. And at the same time, I'm also like a, a traveling businessman and I want to like pay for my coffee on the go. I want to have all my tickets on my smartwatch, you know. How do you have a device which does it all? We really can't. And the only way we could think of doing that so is by introducing these modules so that you can swap the modules if you need and build a smartwatch which is really tailored to your own experiences. You know, whether you do snowboarding and business or whether you know, you're a geek in a lab uh, and doing, I don't know, doing hiking, for example. I think this was actually an article on TechCrunch that uh, one of your writers was wearing four different watches. And bec because they were needing dif different features from the different smartwatches. So it's about which features you want, what's your needs, and you combine them into a single device. Right. No, I think actually one of the things I'd, I'd wanted to say during the, the podcast, but my, my coworkers like, just wouldn't shut up, but is, you know, I think one of the tensions also with the wearables is the tension between sort of like general purpose and like very like focused use case. And, and sort of it seems like one of the things that the modularity allows is that you can have whichever one you want, or on one day it can be a very focused device, the next day it can be a very general purpose device. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, for us it was always about wearables have to be very specific to what you want them to do. Otherwise, uh, they will be just too general, and, or, either, or they will just be very big. If you were to put all the features on your smartwatch, it would just look like a huge smartphone. And for us it's about that specificity that, that really matters. So, is this something where, you know, given like you said, like one day maybe you're going to the office, one day you're, you're going snowboarding, um, where each day potentially you're changing the modules, or is the idea that you have your module and it sort of is kind of static? I mean, obviously you can change it, but, you're, but the idea is that you're not really going to change it that often. We've made it easy to plug and play, so you can change the modules as often as you want, and it's a very easy experience. But it depends on the, your different use cases. If you're filling up the whole device with the modules that you're going to always need, then you don't need to change it. But if you have a lot of different changes in your lifestyle, then you would need to change it every day or every week or based on how hard your life goes. And also I'd like to add, uh, where we really see a huge opportunity for blocks is to tailor to experiences which other smartwatches simply could not do. So think about like maybe enterprise applications, industrial applications. You know, so you could be a worker, say, at a BMW factory, but uh, you'd have a module which specifically gives you access to certain gates, maybe uh, looks around how you move around uh, the factory. Maybe there will be a module for someone else who can, uh, which, can, which can basically sense different gas and so on and chemicals. So that really opens up, like modularity really opens up uh, for us, to, you know, as a marketplace where we can go into specific industries and still be a smartwatch that people would wear in everyday life. 
So are you guys at the point now where you've already started to talk to developers and third parties about additional modules, or are you building all of them right now? Uh, well, so the initial modules we are building, but we are building it with the partners. So initially, we, it's kind of from third-party developers, but we are developing it together. But as we go further on, we're going to open it up. Right, I guess since, since it's such a unique platform, you can't just be like, here's some specs, like, good luck. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we get emails from uh, companies, uh, recently a lot of uh, medical health-related companies who write to us and they say, okay, we need a smartwatch, but we need a smartwatch which has GPS, which has uh, all these different sensors, and you seem to be the guys who can supply that, or at least in the future we can have all these sensors. And based on these modules, then they, we can build uh, very specific applications for, for a hospital and stuff like this. Do you have a sense of um, how many uh, modules you're going to have available at, at launch or when you start shipping? So when we are shipping, we have five modules, uh, the modules that were on Kickstarter, but there's a, a few more modules as well planned and already being ma uh, made. So you guys had your Kickstarter last year. What have you, what have you been up to since then? What's, what's, so you, I mean, you're just kind of advancing along, but what's, what's kind of the latest and, and most exciting thing? So we finished the Kickstarter campaign, I think, mid, mid to end November. So we haven't had that much time yet, but it was... You had like two months. <laughs> Come on, well, one month, yeah. six so weeks. I think the most exciting news for, for us was to kick off actually the manufacturing process. So the manufacturing has begun. So we pretty much live in Taiwan these days. So. <laughs> and, and is this available globally as well? Or? Yeah. And, I mean, is that, is that what, the, what the demand has been, or has it been sort of U.S. focused? Well, there is a lot of demand coming from U.S., but uh, we have seen a lot of our Kickstarter back here, at least coming from Asia, coming from Europe. Great. And, I mean, I guess to close out, uh, we're at CES right now. Are you guys going to have a presence? Is there some place people can go to, to learn more? Yeah, we're in Sands Hall, 80523. Uh, we're showing off some prototypes there, and uh, we are very excited to see all of us, all of you there. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. The uh, Block Smartwatch. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Um, so I'm going to...